Hey y'all. I just came back home and I think Renee's already doing an herb walk with our 101 class. So I'm going to sneak up and surprise her and uh, we'll film a little bit of an herb walk here in our backyard and maybe the park behind us. So if you haven't seen it before, here's the yard. Yay. Oh, they're all hanging out by the fire ring. Stay there, chickens. Hi. You're also hearing questions from my students from this 101. So what's going to happen is, as you get to know me, I'm, I'm here and I'm obligated to prepare you guys to be Western herbalists. And as Western herbalists, it's going to be anything that wasn't the East, China. So if you t stood in China and you turned this way, all the other herbalists are Western herbalists. So I'm going to have to account for a certain medica that you're going to see, lots of which doesn't grow here. I deeply, strongly, in my bones to the point of almost being militant, believe in bioregionalism. That everything we know is growing here as a weed, not as a transplant, not as us putting it into the ground, not as us having to stir it. That it should be able to grow on its own and be strong and healthy and well, and that is the strongest medicine. One of the reasons why I'm showing you like the Bidens. So I want you to know that the Bidens and the Ceta and the Peppergrass and all the things that I'm going to show you are replacements for all these other things that we're going for and all these other things that we're learning. Like, elderberry does grow here it's here everywhere but if elderberry was one of those ones that we would have to plant and put here i'd be like no 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 why are you doing that don't bother with that let's get some oxalis which is high in vitamin c and some ceta and some vitamins and that makes everything that we would need with the elderberry so so this is considered to be a refrigerant this would bring down a fever where this grows in other places it's used during the summertime as a summertime tea to bring down the heat to pull you off from the inside so that would be the flower component of the elder so yes i strongly believe that we should not be introducing species that don't belong here it, only if for conservation and that we should be learning our bioregional medicine and that everything we need is in a five mile walking distance because that's how long it would take us to walk out and back 10 miles five in five out to get medicine for our people if we were shamans or medicine people and trying to find it. We couldn't wait more than a day. We could only have a day's walk to get it. So everything we need, and it's changing with the season that we're in, with the pollen, with the allergies, with whatever's going on, is present at all times. We just have to relearn that as part of this weekend of me trying to give that back to you and inspire that in you, for sure. So yeah, that was a great question, and we will talk about it much, much more throughout. Thank you, Remy. Any other questions or comments? This is Bob. Ah. This is the great Bob Lindy. Yeah. Say hi to Jim McDonald. He's watching. Hey, Jim. I'm sure he's mystified because he was just on the phone with me about being paralyzed. And, like, <laughs> along. and so um, Jim McDonald is a great herbalist and a friend of ours who's up in Michigan and in no way has Bidens. And, well, he might, but he doesn't have Ceta. Um, <laughs> and he's somebody who has helped me through the injury that I was speaking about earlier. And so it's something that I shouldn't be out here work, walking along, but I am because I wanted to teach class, and it's one of the reasons why John is helping. And so, hey, Jim. Um, and so we're doing this. And so as you guys are sitting here, I want to see if there's anything else I can grab so that you don't have to get up before we go into the park. Bob, I we, mean, I was going to say we got cucumber, weed, Biden, ashwagandha. You can do ashwagandha. I was saving ashwa for you. Do you want to do ashwagandha? I can do ashwagandha. Okay. So ashwagandha is in your medicine, and you get it in your it's in your medica you get it in the first class of foundations you do not get it today but we do talk oh about it i today. thought we did and so bob is behind you with ashwagandha and he's going to tell you about ashwagandha and we'll switch camera mm -hmm. we'll, yeah you can go and we can we i can grab bob's and bob can talk about it for sure so this little bush behind you is um ashwagandha this is an ayurvedic herb um and it was kind of chowed on it was no, down to right nothing here. but sticks right about three, four weeks ago, um, a caterpillar really likes this herb. Um, so it destroyed it. And most people know this as Indian ginseng. It's a, an adaptogen. So in general, when we talk about adaptogens, it's one of those category of herbs that helps us adapt to stress. It's a very generalized, generic kind of way of understanding it, but it's probably the best way to look at it. 
We use the root of this, although we're starting to find more research looking at this uh, using the leaves. But there's an issue for a small percentage of people uh, in the world is this is in the nightshade family, uh, Solanaceae. So about, eh, it depends who you ask, anywhere from 5 to 10 percent of people will actually have an adverse reaction to this, basically an inflammatory response that technically the chemical people have a response to is in the aerial parts, the leaves and the fruit. But the reality is eh, I've seen a few people have issues with the root. It's not common, but it is an issue. That said, the root is very common. You'll find it in every adrenal formula you've ever seen. It's very common to add. And it's one of these odd things. We always think of ginsengs as stimulants and, you know, I'll stay up all night if I do it. Ashwagandha in particular, it's used both for anxiety as well as for nourishing and adaption, adapting to stress. So it's a really unique one that we can take at daytime or nighttime and we just feel normal not really stimulated, not really sedated, but things don't phase us as much. Um, super easy to grow down here. Usually you can harvest your root after about a year. I think we've had this one going for three or four years now. The root's probably five or six feet long. Uh, wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and it gets tiny paper covered fruit on it. So there'll be a little paper uh, sack over the fruit um, kind of like tomatillas, if you've ever seen those in the grocery store. When we think about nightshades, that's one of the key indications is having that little papering covering over them. There's other little uh, uh, aspects as well. The common ones, you all know them, uh, potatoes, to tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplant. Uh, yeah. one. What am I forgetting? No. Yeah, that's you all. Got it. <laughs> yeah, that's um, pretty good. I feel like I'm forgetting one. And so people oftentimes have a sensitivity to all of those fruit categories and they'll be like, wait, I'm having a lovely salad with green pepper in it. Why do I feel poorly? Check your nightshades. For sure. Eh. Anybody have any questions about ashwagandha? Now we would have to kill our plant to harvest properly. Mm -hmm. And so we're not going to do that. Yeah, this is a ch teaching garden <laughs> for sure. And we, we eat our food. You can see, obviously we have enough bitens for all kinds of things. And so we'll harvest the bitens if it says okay for that. And after that, we'll talk about that. And it goes a little bit into the planting um, via regional versus things that aren't supposed to be here type of thing. And so this is literally just so you guys can see it for sure, because ashwagandha is now one of those superfood things that that's in everything. I've seen it in an energy drink with ginseng. And so that's the kind of thing to know, like in the 7-Eleven, there's ashwagandha and like, uh, I don't think so. And so we just kind of need to respect that and know where it comes from and how it is and what it looks like. And if the seed was on it properly and you could see the little shade covering, it would demystify the term nightshade that we all hear all the time, but you don't get to see. And we have bred our eggplants and our tomatoes to not have the shade on there anymore like we have on the tomatillos. And so we don't correlate it at all. We don't see it that way. So we just need to know that. It's an amazing, amazing beautiful healing herb and considered to be a goddess in india and so it's just a wonderful wonderful plant for sure any questions about that guy yes it's okay for a long time to use and... so it just depends on who you are in a general sense like we just had this question so david winston is one of the people that i was talking about <laughs> we just had this question with david because as a whole as a community it's a pretty small community especially in the higher ups so when we get together we argue about plants that's what we do we're nerds and so we just had this argument about it because I have a nightshade sensitivity. And what Bob would say was, yeah, I'm getting micro tears whether I see it or not. And what David would say is, no, that's ridiculous. Absolutely not. We don't have that reaction. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And so we all kind of have this argument. So, so long-term use might invoke a sensitivity to nightshades, but, but we should be eating broccoli every day either, or getting, you know, like seasonal type of thing. And so I know people who take mass quantities every single day and have for 20 years. Like it's a thing. It's like ginseng. It's, it's a thing people eat it. And I know that in India, for the most part, it's just everywhere and used prolifically. And so it just is going to be case by case, the way we were talking about with the energetics earlier, case by case study. I probably shouldn't eat as much as I do, as it, like it's in several formulas that I take, for nervous system disorder. And so I probably am getting too much. It's funny. I've heard this is a weed in India that they weed whack back. Like yeah. literally it's this invasive pain in the butt kind of thing. And um, everybody knows that it's medicine. It's just not 
thought of in the same way that we kind of idolize it the way we idolize ginseng and probably mm -hmm. overuse nope. it. <laughs> um, a real quick, does anybody have a time check for me before I decide to take you and Maya out into the bush? <laughs> nice. Okay, we're not taking you anywhere. You're like I've had you long enough, it's time for lunch. So let's go ahead and do just a few more plants in this area that you guys can stay in this area and then we'll go in for, for um, lunch, okay? So one of the things I said, I said the term oxalis. So we're going to talk to you about what oxalis is because it has that vitamin C effect. So if you want to get up, you can look and see these pinky purple flowers that are right here. See the pinky purple flowers that are everywhere? Up there. That's what Now you these look oxalis right like here are a little droopy. I'm going to walk out There's in a, a nice round. Patch. These look great that Bob is here. Now this sounds really, really ridiculous. See this plant right here? Try not to step on it. <laughs> Try to step over this guy right here, okay, everybody? Try to step over that plant right there. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. We're going to go out here into the shade. Like, you guys can walk out here, and we'll talk about oxalis in this component. Like oh, this there's more shade there. <laughs> Good choice. Get into the shade if you want to. Okay. It's yum. This is very important. Because right now, in your grocery store, this second, in Publix, this is being sold for twelve ninety nine in a pot. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. And what Look. is it called again? So this is sorrel, or oh, sorrel. oxalis, okay? So see how that looks like clover? Mm -hmm. And it's St. Patty's time? Yeah. It's right now, this very plant. It's giant clover. It's in the grocery store, it's giant hey, clover. Steve. Okay? So this is oxalis, O. Oh, X L A I S Axel. Okay, sorry. O X A L I S. And that's it. O X A L I S. I have nervous system disorder. You have no excuse. Uh, I um, can't spell. Okay, so it tastes just like a sweet tart. If you have kidney failure or stones right now, don't eat it. Oxalis. Oxalis. It's sorrel. I'm going to pull up a handful. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. All yes, right. it's lovely. I'm going to look. And all of it's yummy. The yeah. stems, the leaves, walk, walk, uh, even right. the root bulb. Like a, like a horse. Okay. <laughs> like also good for salads. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Baking. Um, the flowers sprinkled on top of a cacao cake, like a deep, dark chocolate <laughs> cake, is amazing. Oh, cool. Beautiful. So anytime we have a vitamin C, anytime we have something that tastes sour, and if you guys need to get into the shade, get into the shade. <laughs> anytime we have something that tastes sour, we have a high amount of vitamin C or antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So what happens is as our cells start to deteriorate around the edges, they, a pro they become a prime host for other bacteria and diseases to glom onto and to attack and to do things to. They don't work properly. So our body is supposed to naturally push those cells away, but we're under a large amount of stress, so it doesn't always do it right. And that's why we need antioxidants, to take the oxidation away from ourselves or to take the damaged cells away. Anytime you taste that taste that you're tasting as you guys eat them, that's what it is. That's what it's doing. So even within the elderberry, we talk about the immune modulation. They're a little sour and they have that component to them. That's what's going on. So here it is. Right there, they're selling it in the grocery store. It grows naturally. We didn't plant that. If you guys walk all down and in here, which you can at lunchtime and be happy to, you'll see it growing on the edges. It's just out and about and everywhere. High vitamin C helps to restore the brightness of your skin, helps with age spots, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, just a yes. The only time you don't eat it is if you're predisposed to kidney stones, just like you don't eat spinach, you don't eat sorrel. So this is sorrel or axalis. So up north in your medica, you're going to have wood sorrel. This is a one-to-one -one replacement. This is completely fine. Absolutely. Did anybody eat it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super yummy with some sweet, some some sweetener and be lemonade like, <laughs> happily. You can make fruit roll-ups with it. You could throw it in your salad in little pieces. You could put it in a sweet and sour soup easily. You could have it floating in your sweet and sour soup with wontons. Like, yes. <laughs> and anytime we have a weed growing on its own, it's way higher in its components of, um, of minerals and deposits. It's a way stronger plant than a monocrop broccoli. But this is what we're looking for. We want eats. We want to eat the weeds. We want weeds, for sure.
Any questions about our sorrel right there? I haven't tortured her with that yet, Jim. Yeah. That's for Monday. No, it's decoration. It's in the it's in the vegetable portion where all the flowers are. They'll have the pot sitting out because it's St. Patrick's Day right now. I saw them last night. I thought it was hysterical. It was super funny. Bob, do you want to talk about the bramble because it's right there because the berries are coming up and then after lunch they can see the flowers that are on the edge? Or okay. Do you want to, cause it's, cause it yeah, looks I can. So good and we've got there. some flowers there too. So we'll do Here. one more. So we're going to do Wait. one more and then you guys are free of your servitude of herbalism that you can go to lunch for sure. So Bob's going to talk about, it's all throughout here and it has thorns. So he's going to talk about this guy right here. So, got to separate all of the other little things. There's so many weeds here. I mean, medicine. Um, all of this is medicine, you guys. Every single thing we're standing so on. So this amazing. has a lot of thorns on it. This little guy here, you can see that's a vicious little set of thorns. Oh, that's great. Hold that up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a very close relative to blackberries and raspberries. <laughs> Uh, here in Florida, we call it a dewberry, and you'll notice that here's some flowers on it. So very distinct, uh, five five petals on there. You'll find that usually when you see that flower arrangement here, oh, we're missing a petal on you. Um, it's usually a yummy berry that grows on there, and so this ends up with a very blackberry looking. You guys uh, get in there. Here. Like you can get That's in there. It's super okay. Yummy and. What we find is this has got a lot of the same properties. Okay, a yummy fruit, eat the heck out of them. Who doesn't want the blackberry? But uh, classically, we use the leaves as in the same fashion that we use red raspberry, which is a uh, tissue toner. It tightens and firms uh, the tissues, the muscles, and their function. It's classically used in preparation for childbirth to make for strong contractions. And a lovely... Mm -hmm. Uh, a stringing tea. The roots, uh, and again, classically we use blackberry roots. Uh, in this case, we can dig this up and use the roots of this in the same fashion that it's for chronic diarrhea, where basically the, the tissues are lax and poop falls out. Um, so it keeps the poop from falling out. And then it was an interesting thing. Uh, we took a few of our students, um, oh, actually John was there, uh, and Renee and I uh, were in um, Scotland this past summer, I think mm -hmm. it was. And we did um, a, a very traditional way that we went and we spent a lot of time sitting with a plant, uh, kind of having a conversation and uh, trying to understand a plant better just by sitting there hanging out with it. So they had a version of this, they called it a bramble. Um, and basically it was yummy raspberry, blackberry, but the local uh, one. And I ended up sitting with a huge bush of this. It was almost four foot high. And the stems were as thick around as my finger. And I knew the function, I knew what kind of plant it was. And I was like, oh, I know the leaves. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna learn hanging out with this. And I really hyper-focused in on the stem and actually the flower right before it went to fruit. So it's this just, this will turn into fruit here in another uh, month or so. So I really started paying attention to this and these really, and these stems turn very red as they get older. And what I learned, because literally hanging out with a plant for a couple of hours, having a conversation, and then ultimately making medicine out of it, what I learned was this had a lovely flavor to it. Um, I actually boiled it. Um, so I decocted it for about 30 minutes. And um, I found it was very specific for the transverse colon. That's here, we got ascending, transverse, descending colon, um, to the point where I also noticed um, this, as well as this little um, pre-fruit uh, flower, uh, seemed to work where the small and large intestine meets, where you could actually feel it adjust. And so usually you have to go to a chiropractor or an acupuncturist to adjust your iliosacral sacral valve. Uh, in this case, you could just make it the question out of... So, the so you guys, what Bob just said is so, so, so important. Because remember what I said you, like, I'm going to tell you all these things that you're supposed to know, and they're going to be the correct answer for the test, so to speak. <laughs> and then we're going to contradict all of it. He literally found out something worked that's not written in any book. It's not ever been shared. It's not ever been tested. And there's no question. And we all did it as a class. Are you saying intuitively? Yep. Just well, like intuitively, it told me. Okay. Um, it's you another felt way it, of learning plants. Uh, you felt it. 
Yeah. Yeah, but intuitively it didn't work. Intuitively he got the message. Then we physically made it as medicine, as an experiment, and, we tested, and it. tested it. And we tested it over and over and over and over, and, and it worked. It in your, yes, gurgled it and felt it, and everybody in the class felt it. And so it's something that everybody has to understand. The reason why we say something is because we did it and it worked and we did it over and over and over and over. And so now it's this huge ally. And it doesn't mean it wasn't doing that before. It means we just don't have any written language of it. And our ancestors are not passing it on the same way that we used to have that family unit. And so it's important for us as a community to work as a whole to get to know the other ancestors that are here that are our plants to work not separate but together so that happens and so we're here willing to say and do anything that we possibly can to regain this lost knowledge that we had and so that's just a wonderful thing that he was willing to experiment about that because bob's an epity doctor just kidding <laughs> but um, you know that's the really funny part like i know blackberry and raspberry we know that up and down it's normal everybody medicine everybody knows the leaf everybody knows the root yeah and so the guy who was leading the trip was an herbalist of 30 years, um, had an herb school there in Scotland. Um, and when he was a student a billion years ago, this was the plant he studied. And I, I'm a research guy. I researched the plant. I could find no references on the stem or this particular development So what Bob's flower. saying is he doubted himself. He <laughs> doubted what he was feeling. He doubted what was going on. So he launched into hyper doctor mode and started trying to desperately find an answer for what was happening. Somebody must have done this before. Absolutely. And you right. know, a really bad thing, if you're like in a college class or something or any kind of a class, you never choose the subject that your teacher is an expert. He in. wrote a thesis on it. He wrote his dissertation, yeah. the, the teacher who was leading this and on it. He even said, but we didn't know it. I've never heard of this before. He had is never that the tried it. Plant, is that what it is? Yeah, basically. Bla it's basically yeah. a blackberry. It's the Florida mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Florida blackberry. Yeah. So it's important for it you guys. Berry. I thought it was important that we started the class the way we did so you understand that you have firm foundation planted underneath your feet. This isn't some rogue random class where I'm reading off the thing that oh, says no, elderberry is good for colds. It is pretty, <laughs> it is pretty rogue. -y. But it's not, it's not one of those things. I'm not going to tell you something that I haven't eaten, that I haven't poisoned, that I haven't tried, that I haven't done. I'm just not. I'm going to tell you this is, and I literally say this term, this is what the book tells you. But I've done this a hundred times this way, and I'm here to tell you it works. And the reason I know is because a hundred different people we've done it with because that's how many clients that we see. So it's important for you to have the ability to trust yourself enough to not need the A+, plus, not need the answer. I don't care if somebody else didn't say it. Trust who you are. Trust what you know. Do it. Feel it. Love it. Be it. Like This is something that's very important for all of us to start to get that foundation back, that ancestor knowledge back for us. And that's part of why we do this class. And so those stories are so important because if he would have been a, a, a good student the way we've all been taught, he never would have opened his mouth because it's going against the professor and against all the, all the things we know are the right answer for the A in the class. So it was very important that Bob was willing to speak out and say that in public for us to then get to try it. Because we all did it as a community. We did all of our plants as a community. We talked to our plants. We let our plants talk to us. And then we expressed what that was. And you know how hard that is if you're not from that vein of a plant talks, like a crazy Dr. Bob. And so it's something that I want you to get the trust and foundation of your ancestor medicine out of this. Now... This is the Traditional School of Herbal Studies, and we are here doing a plant walk with you, and all of my students, oh, thank you, are very, very hungry and very, very hot, even though this is supposed to be our winter, and we are done for today. So thank you so much for coming on this 101 plant walk. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. That, you your arms about